Hey everybody. Now, when you're using Blender, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, especially when you're trying to use the Boolean operation and things aren't disappearing the way that you'd expect it to. But the problem isn't Blender and it isn't the Boolean operation. You've just got too much on your screen and you gotta simplify, man. So here we are in Blender and we're looking at a scene that was created by a student who is wanting to create a spinner, essentially. But they say in Blender here, oh, this spinner, it doesn't look right. I'm, I'm doing the negative Boolean operations. Let's take a look at it right here. Yeah, we've got, so we've got a union unioning the arms on here and we've got a difference taking the the holes of the arms out of or, or the hole out of the middle but it just it, it's it's still we can't see the hole the student took this and exported it and looked at it in cura and they were able to see that yeah everything was looking fine but when they went back into blender the holes aren't there the way that they expect them to what's the problem here well the problem is that the objects that we're taking the holes, that we're taking to use holes that we're using in the Boolean operation, they're still there in the scene. They're essentially filling the hole back up for your view. So while the object might be fine, the object that we're taking the holes out of, refilling that hole confuses the look of things. So what's the solution? Well, there's a couple of different solutions and I wanna go over a couple of them. One is to use local view. Now local view is found on the menu right over here under view and then view global slash local or you just hit slash on the number pad and you get there. And there you go, now the object looks perfect. What did I do? Well, local view is, is kind of like a view buffer. It allows you to view just one or two or however many objects you select and kind of hide everything, but without hiding them. It just kind of temporarily puts them out of the way so that you can get a view of things. And notice up here in the corner, it says your perspective local. So if, you're ever, if you ever see the local there, just keep in mind that you might not want to leave it this way because there are other objects that are being kind of hidden. Let's talk about hiding objects. You can potentially hide the objects that you don't want to see. All you have to do is click on them and either right over here in the over here in the uh, in the outliner view, you can click the little eye icon there and poof, make it disappear and then bring it back. That's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. The other thing is to hit the object and hit H and then you can hit Alt H to unhide everything. So if I hide this, and hide this and then I decide oh wait I still need to work on those hidden objects I can press alt H and bring them back so that's another way that we can do this now one other thing that we can do is we can change how the objects are rendered so if you select the object and right over here uh, in the in the objects menu right here scroll down and where it says maximum draw type uh, right here on me you can change it to, instead of drawing it a textured object, or, this is saying, so over here, where we decide how we're gonna view it as bounding boxes, wireframes, we could view everything as bounding boxes. And this view is, I don't find it very useful, or we could view it as wireframes and we can get in and out of that with Z. Or we can view it with the textures, which doesn't really matter because we're just doing solid surface modeling. But if you go over here, and tell it, okay, I only want you to show me the bounds of this object. It, it doesn't hide it, but it makes it less visible, it kind of takes it out of the way. You can still select it and you can still go into edit mode and you can still edit it and change it if you need to. You can, it's still in the scene, but it's not in the way. Sometimes I will do this and tell them to just render it as wireframe so that I can still see the edges of it and stuff like that, see where it's interacting with my stuff, or sometimes I do bounds. It's interesting to note that the Bool tool, which is a plugin that you have to use for Blender, but if you use the Bool tool to create your union and, and difference effects, it automatically sets everything that is insignificant now to being bounds and getting it out of the way. And I like this method. This is an okay method, but there is one other way I want to talk about, and that is using layers. So notice right here on my menu, 
Uh, there's these little boxes. These are your layers. You can organize your scene into layers. And just like layers in Photoshop or anything like that, different objects on different layers uh, can be turned off and on while still being active in the scene. You can you can hide them or make them visible. Now, unlike Blend or uh, Photoshop or something like that that has layers, uh, these layers can't be affected in total that I know of. But it is a great way to organize it. So I could say, you know, take these objects, which I've, I'm done with, and move them to another layer, which you can do by hitting, I believe it's under the object menu, and there it is, move to layer, or just hit the M key, move it to a layer, and then this menu pops up and you choose which layer you want to move it to. And now if I click over here, I can see the objects that I take away from, and over here, I can have the final object. Now, uh, we also have the wings on here, so I might want to move them to a different layer, but I'm not doing that just yet because I want to point out something about this object. And have you seen it already? Over here, on the sides of this object where it gets really, really small, that, if it prints, is going to be a weak point, is going to be a point of break. So I might suggest to the person who made this that we... Uh, that we modify this just a little bit and we scale out these points uh, into shift Z, constrain them to the shift Z to make this object just a little bit less uh, thin at those parts. And now it ends up looking a little bit more like a bow tie than, than the spinner. But either way, there we go, there's my suggestion. So in Blender, if you would like to organize things, there's a lot of different options for doing. And there's a new option coming in the new version of Blender that if I ever get good at, I might show you guys as well. But for now, using layers, hiding objects, or changing the maximum draw type of them are all great ways to keep your scene organized, to help your flow be, be as even as possible, but still allow everything to be editable. That's one thing I love about Blender is that it never leaves you in the dark. You can always go back and change things and have it percolate on up through a few if you don't bake those settings in and make them permanent. But there you go. So there it is, and I hope that this helps you guys make something. I really hope that this will help you organize your projects and make them better. I want to thank you guys very much again for your watch and for your view and for your support. And safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.